Okay, sports fans, we're back for the semifinal game of the Anthony K. Memorials Open. It's Bill Burke against Jim Rao. So now we're down to two lefties and one waiting in the wings. I think we can definitely say, Bob, we will have a left-handed winner. That's correct. And I won't harp on it anymore, okay? <laughs> okay. Bill Burke leading off in the first frame. Perfect strike. He liked it. Well, Bill That's, will receive two more pins than he got the last time this game, Bob. He gets 13 pins this game. 13 pins, so that means if he shoots 288 or more that Jim Rao can't beat him no matter what. <laughs> well, we're definitely going to see a style here of a guy that can get more revs on the ball than anybody I know with a little effort that needs to be done. A great guy and Mr. Jim Rao. There it is. There's that powerful shot. All ten pins, and I think there's sawdust laying back there in the pit. <laughs> well, folks, the last game he bowled this morning was a 300 game, so he's got at least 13 in a row now because he gets the first one here to lead off this match. And also, we might mention that the last three games today at 813, which out of his four 800s, repeat, four 800s that he's had, that's the highest one. Is that right? Eight, I think he said 803, 804, and 807. Well, he's getting better and better then, getting right? Getting better. And that, by the way, was also his 11, 300. 11, 300s. Wow. There's a tremendous follow through. Yeah. And the revolutions. Boy, that was a good, until he jumped in the way, that was an excellent shot of Jim's uh, ball track and the way it just revs into the pocket. And I'd say that that's one reason he kicked out the 10. We saw Roger High lead the, lead the 7, and... Jim definitely gets a few more revs than Roger. Not taking nothing away from Roger. He does roll the ball very well also, but that little bit can make the difference sometimes. Sure can. Bill Burke looking for a double. Didn't like Doesn't that like one. It. This time the five pin won't fall, and he's left himself the five eight. Like we mentioned, Bob, uh, as you see at the, his release point, he does raise up, and if he does that too early before he's got his thumb out of the ball then he's going to pull the ball to the right and that time he pulled it even more than he did the times before and barely caught the head pin and left a pretty difficult spare really because the way the ball finishes he has a, it's easy to pick the five off but he converts excellent shot for Bill Burke and with his handicap he will have 33 in the first so he owns a three pin lead at the moment Bill Burke from Sturgis. He's using a bowling ball that we understand was drilled by Scotty Myers. Scotty just missed making our finals. I think he finished uh, seventh. Yeah, he's like I mentioned earlier, he's uh, rolling the, the new Vector 2, which is made by Columbia. That time, Randy, he cut it short again, and it went through the nose. They got a little softer with that one, wasn't it? As crisp with that release and therefore ran up through the nose. And left himself another spare that's easy to, to chop. The 2-4. Two two four, four, right? Especially with the way the ball finishes outside here, Bob, it makes it even easier to chop it. Let's see how he does. And he does it very well. No chance of a chop there. And a spare in the third for Bill Burke. And now Jim Rao, two for two and moving into the third frame. Only just one. looking at Jim, he's such a powerfully built guy. He just, just a big teddy bear. Though. Big teddy, that's exactly <laughs> right. He's a very gentle man. He, he sure he's is. A true gentleman. Definitely competitive though, Bob. Oh. You see the intensity in his eyes. Coming up, and there it is again, Randy. Shake and bake. I'll tell you, a couple extra revs, as you mentioned, and just enough to get that 10 pin out of there. Yeah, the last ones to go were the bucket and the 10. <laughs> Powerful ball. Amazing what those revolutions can do to those pins sometimes. And, and uh, Jim Rao rolls the ball. I mean, it's, it's kind of a straight, he, he doesn't uh, turn the ball hardly at all. It's, it's all kind of straightforward roll, but he has such good speed 
And that's what keeps him from getting in trouble. A guy maybe half his stature try to throw the same kind of ball and be breaking out of the building. That's right, Bob. He's very, very good on changing hand positions to get the ball to roll the way he wants it. Excellent no, shot. No doubt about that one, folks. He had two shakers in a row, and that one was right back square in the pocket. And with that strike, he now owns a 19-pin lead. And Bill Burke is getting a baptism of fire right here. <laughs> it's the first time he's been behind. Let's see how he responds. He didn't like that one. Same shot as he had last time on lane six, Randy, the 5-8. I don't know whether he does this every time, but I noticed that time it looked like at the ball release he took his eyes off the target and looked more down, which would also cut your follow through short instead of extending through what the arrow, the area around the arrows, and would also definitely make him pull the ball, taking the eyes off the target. Let's see how he does on the 5 8. And again, an excellent shot for Bill Burke. No problem with those spares. With that spare, as the scoreboard will show you, Bill Burke has 69 in the third. And Jim Rao, of course, 60 in the second. Bill Burke trailing by 21. I just have a feeling, Bob, that if uh, Bill doesn't do more than eight spare, he's in for uh, a long game. A long game, <laughs> for sure. Let's see if he can get it back in the pocket. And he oh, does, Randy. Got it. It went slower than Jim's did on a light hit, but it went down. A good shot for Bill Burke, and maybe that's the one he needed to get himself back where he wants to be. Here's some of our other finishers. Uh, Randy Wamba, Mishawaka City Secretary. Tenth, Steve Fisher. Linda Stouffer, ninth. Jim Orfanos, eighth. Scotty Myers, seventh. And Bruce Rendox, sixth. As you mentioned, Bruce Rendox lost to Ron Jonas, 245 to 236 in the preliminary match. Also one of the contenders for Bowler of the Year, along with Mr. Rao and another strike. Another cruncher for Jim Rao. That's five. And that makes at least 17 in a row, including his 300 game, the last game this morning. I'm sure he's not thinking about that at I'm all. I'm sure he's not. <laughs> he's definitely one of, one of us that uh, thinks about one shot at a time. He's not up there to get a tr strike. He's up there to execute and make a good shot. He knows he has a better chance of getting a strike if he does those things. And that's a, that's a big point for all of you folks just starting out, or even the folks who have been bowling for a long time. As Randy mentioned, don't think about a strike. That just puts extra pressure on your uh, mental process. Just think about making a good shot, and the strikes will take care of themselves. You bet. Let's see if he can get halfway there, Bob. Oh, oh and just as you talked about earlier, Randy, if anything's going to stop, it's going to be a corner pin. Yep. And that Great was a run. Made a great shot. I'm sure he's not dis. I'm sure he's disappointed that he didn't carry it, but he's not disappointed in the shot he made. He did make a very good shot. So with a spare, Jim Rao, with a 30-pin lead, will keep that 30-pin lead, but it does open the door just a little bit for Billy Burt. Since he has a strike up, he does have a potential to cut into that lead if he can continue that in the sixth and seventh frame. See, if Jim can work to seven, and he does. Sometimes that's real hard to do, Bob. He's thrown well, so many strikes here. He had not shot a spare in a game and a half. <laughs> As a matter of fact, Randy, uh, earlier this morning, before that 300 game, Jim had the first nine in a row, left the seven pin and threw it in the gutter for a 267. But it didn't hurt him. He still obviously came in second. But here's Bill Burke in the sixth frame looking for a double. Needs it bad. Oh, and he oh. caught a break there. Again, that's a third time he's crossed over on that lane, Randy. Whatever he's doing or not doing is definitely consistent. He's, he's had everything on the right side there lately. Now the, the fifth frame he did execute and got a strike. And uh, of course it looks the same on the paper even though it was in a different location. That's for sure. And Let's see if he can really take advantage of this and turn it into three in a row and cut into the lead even more. Could cut it to 10 pins right here with a strike. Oh, and he didn't like it again, Randy. He's, I think you're right. He seems to be pulling up on the shot even more and pulling his eyes from the target. And there's a tough little spare, the 2-8, the double wood. Yeah, he's fluting, flirting with disaster when you keep doing that consistently. He might get away with it a few times, but it's eventually going to catch up with you, that's for sure. Well, he 
he definitely needs to convert this spare to really I would think to have almost any chance in this match. Excellent. He does. I'll tell you, Randy, I've been very impressed this game with Bill Burke's spare shooting, even though he's thrown some errant strike shots, but he's had four choppable spares and he's made every one of them look very easily. He sure has, Bob. And that's a lot of times with the new contemporary releases, spares are the toughest thing with their game, the way they release the ball. Right. Jim Rao now stepping up frame number seven, looking to get back into the pocket. I shouldn't say back in, he <laughs> never left the pocket, but he's looking to get back in the strike, slide, the strike side of the lane. And he does. Great shot. He's rolling the ball extremely well, Bob. Well, I was telling you during the break, when Jim Rao is is on his game as he is right now, it just looks like he could never ever bowl bad. You wonder how he could ever bowl a bad game because he looks so good. But hey, it happens to all of us. Obviously, bet. he can't always be as sharp as he is right now. But mentally, he looks like he's just where he wants to be. Well in control, very positive, definitely knows where he has to put the ball. Frame See number if he eight. can continue that. You bet. You never know when it might go away. <laughs> and he was stalking that one. As soon as he let go, he started walking to the left, and the ball responded, and boom, another shaker strike. That was one of those famous light hits. Tried to give Carl five of that one. <laughs> <laughs> there he is, Carl K. Michaeline, both watching. I know yesterday, you know, he told me a, a week ago he was pretty depressed being away, and yesterday we had so much fun, he overdid his stay, but said he could put up with the pain. It was a lot of fun. And we were very happy to have him here representing Anthony K. And, and himself, and, and it does him and all the other bowlers good to see him out here like that. You bet. Billy yep. Burke on that shot, crossing over again for the fourth yeah. time in a row, and this time left a solid seven pin on the Brookie side. I don't know whether he always looks down at release, or that's just something that he's doing I that he I think he always look. looks down, right? He does. Might be part of his game. Boy, to me, that'd be real difficult to do, to move my eyes at release. But it is. It, uh, but it got that, him here. That, what can right. you say? It's like, uh, <laughs> let's say, a Jack Hosteller sliding on the right foot. If you do it all the same all the time, why that becomes part of your game. Bill Burke, 156 in the seventh, a spare up in the eighth. Jim Rowell with a possible 189 in the seventh, so he's leading by 33 pins. Billy Burke needs strikes. Must strike. Looks like he likes that one. Yeah. A good shot. Maybe his best shot of this game right there. Well, if he had any outside chance, he definitely needed that because now he can still shoot 236. There, and our scoreboard uh, shows you the, the name of the game is strike, and Jim Rao has done that every frame but one so far. Currently going at a 240 clip. As Randy mentioned, Billy, Bill Burke can shoot 236. So basically, if Jim at least stays clean, he's got the match. That's right. Let's see what he does in frame number nine. I don't think he'll let up. <laughs> Doubtful. Solid pack strike. What can you say? Picture is worth a thousand words, and that certainly told the story right there. And that locks it up. Sure does. Just a matter of how much now. Yep. Here Bill is. He got it. He had a double and struggled there, but stayed clean and. The strikes just that Jim was able to throw or just ran away from him. He did mention the name, maybe the name of the game today is strikes, but <laughs> normally the name of the game is spares. I think that's the most important part of the game. And if you get all your spares, your strikes will come. And what I always try to tell people is that, you know, for every spare you miss, you got to get two strikes just to get the spare back. Excellent point, Randy. Crusher strike. Now one more we'll have... Uh, 270 game. That means he'd be, if he does happen to strike out, that means the last two games of competition he's bowled, he has 23 out of 24 possible strikes. And that matches what Rick Wise did uh, yesterday morning to start the entire tournament. He shoots 300 right out of the box, shoots 279 the next game for 23 out of 24. Could and be I, a very interesting final match. I guess. <laughs> what else can you say? 
Well, let's see if he can continue here. Definitely has to stay up because he's got one more match to go. That one just a little light, maybe a little fast with the feet. Still a fantastic game with this conversion here. Going to give him 266. And Bill Burke can definitely be proud of the way he bowled for being the first time in the finals. Well, he shot 249, and if he if he strikes out, he could have 236. Nothing wrong with that at all. Not at all. A big spare for Jim Rao in 266. Tremendous bowling for Jim Rao. I'm sure Bill Burke will uh, learn quite a bit from his first experience bowling here on TV. And uh, I'm sure he'll be around for quite a few years to come and be back again. I'm sure he will because he throws a powerful ball in his own right. And if it hadn't been for the right lane in this game, for on lane six, he just seemed to have lost his maybe his confidence on that lane, Randy, and, and threw a lot of brookie shots. But he will be back. You bet. Now with a spare here and a strike, he can still shoot 216, which is very respectable. The one thing Bill Burke will miss out on by not winning this game is qualifying for the Masters Tournament because if he had won this game, he would have moved on and finished no worse than second. And, of course, the Masters is open to all first and second place finishers, so Bill Burke will have to wait another day to get into the Masters. That's right, Bob. And there's something about being in that championship match. It's different than all the rest. <laughs> it sure is. You can't explain it until you've been there. That's right. So Bill Burke with a big strike finishes with 216. Jim Rao with a fantastic 266. And so stay tuned, folks. You're going to see a lot of strikes coming up. Jim Rao against our leader right now, Rick Wise. We'll be right back with that championship match right after this short timeout.